Hello there, welcome back to Simon Shed. It's time for another layout update on the Shed Valley Railway, which is my N-gauge version of part of the Seven Valley Railway. So it's been uh, quite a while since the last one. Uh, some of this was filmed uh, the start of the year, really. Um, so trying to pull it all together and get things moving again. Uh, this uh, episode is all about uh, the bridge, Victoria Bridge at Arley. It's done and uh, I'm going to be fitting it in place in this video uh, which will be uh, good that's a huge uh, focal point for the layout uh, so we'll see how I get on with that plus a little bit of ballasting and uh, thinking about uh, the actual water itself and how to do that uh, the water for the uh, River Seven that goes underneath the bridge so let's take a look at how I got on so immediately after the last video, I uh, winched the old layout, Bodenham Woods down from its uh, place up in the rafters. And uh, I was gonna, th I thought I'd film a nice quick video on uh, my decision, uh, what to do with Bodenham Woods. Would I scrap it, sell it, uh, reuse bits of it, eBay it? Um, and uh, weeks and weeks later, uh, here it remains and I still haven't decided what to do. So uh, what I'm gonna do is winch it back up and uh, delay the decision for another day. Um, I suspect what I'll actually do is, uh, there's quite a lot I can reuse and uh, reusing bits off here will help speed up the progress on the Shed Valley Railway layout. And uh, I think that's the main thing I need to do at the moment is speed up my progress. And progress, speaking of progress, as you can see, I've finally finished, as near as damn it, the uh, Victoria Bridge for Arley. So, uh, let's winch this back up and uh, I'll show you the uh, bridge in detail. And just to uh, get a rough idea, I've just plumped the bridge down here and uh, really pleased with how it turned out. It's took me a long, long time to do it. Um, my uh, progress was quite quick at first, but uh, my patience did start to run out and progress slowed and got less and less <laughs> towards the end. Uh, so it really slowed down, but uh, I'm glad it's uh, glad it's done now. I'm pleased with the way it turned out. Um, although it does look like I need to glue on a spoke back on over there, as one of them seems to have dropped off. You always notice these things as soon as you turn the camera on. Uh, obviously, it's not perfect, but. Uh, probably my most ambitious scratch building project so far and uh, yeah I'm really pleased with it so obviously um, we need to put a track on the top I've made the sort of walls uh, the parapet walls for along the bridge just need to stick those on uh, and sort of blend it in with uh, the existing scenery here so uh, that will go there we may need to take off uh, this wall just so we can fit it uh, slot it into there uh, but that's easy enough so yeah I guess the next stage is to get that in place and get some track on top so I've got it very roughly in place. Um, the plastic card that I've used for the top, I managed to slide that underneath my foam insulation uh, to give a little bit of a gap there because it has a slight uh, hump in it, which I need to sort of get rid of or disguise. Um, it will actually, it will actually flatten out if you press it down. So I might have to sort of glue the ends 
firmly and then put a weight on the top or something but uh, I'm sure we can get over that so I think I showed you most of the construction technique in the last video so I won't go over all that again but uh, we've got the sort of curved plastic card with a sort of thin bit stuck on top to sort of form an eye beam eye section beam and we've got the little bits stuck on there and these bits which took ages just very thin bits of plastic card uh, painted it all up and you can see there's sort of four this curved bit there's four of those in layers don't know if you can see through there so it gives quite a good effect there you go, see it better through that. So we're really pleased with uh, with how that looks. And I have repainted the whole thing since last time because I wasn't happy with the colour. The colour now looks closer to the real thing. And it now looks the same on the camera as it does to my eye as well. Which is good. So that's, that's roughly in place. Uh, I might get a new bit of track for the top uh, but yeah I'll carry on working on that and blending it in more progress on the bridge I've got the uh, track running across the top and I'm happy with that now uh, in terms of the running uh, there is a slight compromise I've had to make um, because of the curvature of the bridge uh, I could either rebuild the whole thing again uh, which has taken me months or as you can see here we've got a thicker a lot of ballast compared to the middle um, which keeps the track nice and level otherwise uh, I tried sticking the track right down to here but we've got a lot of de derailments as you would expect on uneven track but with it like this I've run uh, some big trains across at full speed and it's all been fine uh, which is very important so if we turn this way I've uh, patched up the walls and put the bases on as best as I can and put some uh, parapet walls on top there and what I'm doing next is I've got some uh, line side fence uh, that I'm currently sticking together. This is two pieces uh, stuck together. So I'll need to keep repeating that. And that'll go on there. And also, <coughs> ballasting. So I've made a first pass uh, at the ballasting from there. Uh, that's why I say it's the first pass, because I obviously missed the glue there. Um, most of this is okay in the center of the track but obviously need to redo the edges uh, for some reason the edges didn't really stick at all but that's okay we can have another go at that the main thing is I'm really glad the running is smooth let us venture briefly uh, outside of the shed this is a rather nice day and also I want to show you something shed related, if not train related. I've been hard at work uh, working on this path outside the front of the shed, which was all bits of concrete and wonky slabs. Ripped all that up and uh, leveled it. Put a sheet down and uh, put some bricks in uh, along the edge. And obviously got a lot of bags of uh, Cotswold stone. And yes, pleased with that. Looks a lot better. And it means uh, I don't trip up as much when I come into the shed, <laughs> which is always good. Right, back to the ballasting. Uh, one of my least favourite jobs. And... It looks a bit messy at the moment because the glue's still drying. I will uh, 
chip away these sort of bits or cover them up with grass or something to neaten it up a bit so I'm not finished yet um, but what I did try was this uh, ballast laying machine uh, you can't really see it on camera but it's uh, www.goldenvalleyhobbies.com on the side uh, now that didn't work here unfortunately mainly because of bits like this where you've got the uh, hills really close to the track and it wasn't uh, wide enough to get the uh, ballast spreader through uh, but this was actually uh, sent in very kindly by uh, Gary Lester who I believe it was a while ago now uh, bought an N-Gage one by mistake uh, instead of a double O uh, we've all done it I think I bought an entire double O gauge uh, back scene once by mistake instead of the N-Gage version but yeah he was kind enough to send that uh, over to me and uh, I've been meaning to give it a try and on the track where we haven't we're not impeded by uh, hills either side hopefully you can see there it's uh, producing really good results so literally just um, I've glued that brush on as Gary suggested and uh, just put a little bit of ballast in just to test it and literally just if you put a bit of pressure on it there's little guidelines for the rails and just slowly drag it backwards and it produces a much better result than my uh, many many hours of fiddling about with the brush and trying to get it looking neat so yeah I think what I'll do is uh, use that and sort of ballast the rest of the track before I do the scenics it's just to make sure there's nothing in the way of the tool because I think uh, that ballasting tool will speed things up a lot I can't do it just yet because uh, I've got another not so fun job of uh, filling in all these gaps still to do on all of this <laughs> so that'll take a little while as well so we'll leave that for now and uh, get back to concentrating on the bridge so the fence is mostly stuck on um, just waiting for these bits that are stuck to dry before I start messing about with the bits that aren't stuck down here because then well I did try that and it pulls the middle off and we're back to square one so I'm not going to touch that for a little while what I am trying to do is raise the water level effectively uh, it needs to come up just above the bottom of these bricks here so it needs to come up about 25 mil about an inch so I've just laid out uh, some newspaper as a rough pattern and then I'm going to stick that onto this board uh, which is just an old laminate floor board cut that out with a jigsaw and uh, because this end is narrower it should just slide under the bridge that's the theory let's give it a try there we are it took about three attempts but uh, had to trim a few extra bits off but the basic shape is there uh, so the thickness of this underneath uh, plus the height of this gets us up to the right place so this will be the surface of the river um, with a very thin layer of realistic water on top which I have bought a bottle of um, just need to figure out how to colour this surface and obviously uh, a bit of plaster bandage and static grass to blend in all the edges again so that's the next job you will have to excuse the tapping noise if that's coming through there seems to be uh, a flock of birds tap dancing on the roof uh, so we'll ignore that and plow on so this is where we've got to uh, I think it's time to get this update out there uh, it's been sort of filmed over the course of at least three or four months so uh, 
this is where I am. I've uh, obviously gone around the edges, resorted to the old school uh, papier mache, uh, just strips of newspaper and PVA, uh, just because uh, I started doing it in the uh, shaper sheet plaster stuff, um, but it's obviously been sitting on the shelf for too long because uh, one minute it was nice and runny and 30 seconds later it had gone rock hard so uh, <laughs> it was a bit out of date so yeah decided to crack on with the newspaper in instead so I'll paint over that and obviously grass over it and redo the banks blend that all in uh, now this uh, was a, a bit of an experiment that failed uh, I just printed out uh, some different colours on the printer and put the realistic water on top uh, thinking that it might be a nice easy quick way to do the colour for the base of the river but as you can see it's, the realistic water has affected the ink uh, so it just makes the ink run and looks terrible but it was worth a try, uh, which leads me on to uh, a question, I guess. How how should I uh, proceed with the realistic water? Just paint the whole the whole lot. Just buy some paints and and try and get the colour right, and uh, lay the water down. Or if you've got any other ideas, let me know. Um. So yeah, that's the that's the next thing. Get the. Uh, Certainly get the banks blended in, uh, figure out how to uh, colour the surface of the, the water. I might hold off on actually putting the water down until I've got the sort of trees. There's going to be a mass of trees on this bank and obviously some trees and bushes here to sort of hide these gaps. Um, and I just don't want to damage the surface of the water and get bits on it and dents in it uh, while I'm doing that so yeah that's where we are coming along nicely I'll just try and keep the momentum going so thanks very much for watching I'll see you next time <laughs>